Hello, Roger Cuthbert here. Welcome to the Halstead and District Photographic Society's In Isolation competition, week eight. The theme this week is coffee morning and afternoon tea. Looking at the competition results so far, we've had seven rounds and the last two have both been won by Andrew Carpenter. Let's see what happens this week. Our guest judge this week is Ruth Wiseman, LRPS. Ruth is our club competition secretary. Hi everyone, this is Ruth Wiseman. I'm competition secretary or have been for the past season at Halstead and District Photographic Society. And I am looking at images submitted on our In Isolation competition. This is round eight, the theme of which is morning coffee and afternoon tea. The previous round that I judged was um, the theme of my bathroom and I thought that was a pretty tough challenge. And this one is no different, if anything, even more difficult. But you've come up with a fantastic set of images, all of which totally fit the subject. Some are more inventive than others, and I will be bearing that in my mind when I eventually pick the winner. But on first glance, there are quite a few that could be winners. I should add that these comments are purely my own thoughts and, of course, are influenced by my own preferences. So here goes. Arabica beans with filter. You can almost smell the lovely chocolatey aroma coming off these coffee beans. Good job I've got a cup, cup of steaming coffee next to me as I'm looking at the entries, otherwise I could be suffering from caffeine withdrawal symptoms. We just know that these beans are going to make a really tasty cup of coffee. You've chosen to focus right in on the beans, but leave a little piece of background in each of the four corners, which I assume is the filter mentioned in the image title. The inclusion of this different texture and color lifts the shot and gives it much more impact than had it been just the beans on their own. The background colour blends with the dark brown of the coffee beans and is reminiscent of the crema on top of a good espresso. Well done. Blue Mountain Colombian over roasted. I think we must have a few coffee connoisseurs in the club. My guess is that you've set up this shot outside as we have some green in the central top part of the image. Whether that's right or not, I don't know but I'm not so sure I would have chosen that colour. The rest of the image is so much about coffee that I think a shade of cream or brown would have been more in keeping, but I love what you've done to create the cameo. The text lists the type of coffee with a description of their taste, and you've blurred out a good part of the image using a vignette to draw our attention right bang into the middle so that we focus on the cup and the coffee beans. Lots of ju judges rattle on about not having text in a photo, but it doesn't bother me in the slightest. And here, I think it's an intrinsic part of the shot. Another good one. Brewing a cuppa. Good old granddad. When we look at this image, our eyes immediately go to the mug, and I'm sure that's what you intended. I'm wondering if, if the grandson or granddaughter actually wrote the words on the mug and then it was glazed and fired. Either way, it's obviously a gift that means a lot to the author. You've presented it on a coffee machine and have added to the image by having a stream of what looks like water running into the mug. I wonder if it might have been a nice touch to have coffee running into the mug, but perhaps it wouldn't actually look very different if you did. Either way, a nice image that is about coffee time, but also about the importance of family. Coffee time. This is a really accomplished image. You've selected colors and shapes very carefully. The saucer and to a lesser degree, the espresso cup make a beautiful wave shape and it's enhanced by the reflection. There's nothing unwanted here. Everything in the image is an essential and balanced part of it. The red spoon has a highlight of a window in the centre, but there's not much you can do about that. Perhaps it could be softened, but that might look artificial. The coffee itself is fantastic. We have what looks to be a mix of grounds and beans, 
and the moment at which gravity takes over has been caught to perfection. The lighting is also worth mentioning because it's so good. When dealing with a white cup and dark brown coffee beans, it would have been easy to blow out a highlight or lose the impact of the beans against the black background, but you've done neither. It's a superb shot. Coffee shop, coffee dream. This is a high key image that does, as the title says, have a dreamy soft quality to it. I like the fact that you've chosen to take the exposure up a little. It really fits the composition. Talking of which, the way everything has been arranged has had a good deal of thought. I think it works very well indeed. Personally, I would have changed the angle of the spoon so that it's not in alignment with the handle of the cup, but that's a purely personal preference. The jug in the bottom left is particularly well lit. It's bright, but you've held it in with no blown highlights. The additions of the biscuits and the coffee beans bring deeper tones and different textures. There's exactly the right amount of space around the items in the frame. A really thoughtful and well put together image. Favourite coffee spot. I like this image because to me it captures the essence of the mid-morning coffee break. Time to down tools and stop for a moment to enjoy a mug of coffee and a biscuit. A break from the hard toil of gardening, something that Phil and I know a lot about. <laughs> Because you've included a good section of your garden in the background, the image has context. We immediately know that you're out there enjoying the spring sunshine, and we know that you love your garden because we can see plants and trees, not least the espaliered fruit tree against the fence. It's been taken in full sun, as we can see from the harsh shadows, which isn't always a good time for photography, but you have handled the lighting conditions well. Identical twinings. Now, I wonder if this is a play on words. I had to go and look in my cupboard to make sure of the spelling, but sure enough, twinings do make tea, and that's how you've spelt it here. Not twinings, but twinings. Maybe I'm re reading too much into it though. But that aside, you've presented a really unusual shot for our theme. However, I can't imagine why you would take tea before you'd had a chance to get dressed, but there you go. At first, I thought we were looking at what was a picture of someone else's artwork. And as you know, that's a pet hate of many judges. But on closer inspection, I believe the cup on the right has been put into the picture. So I guess what we're seeing is the original artwork on the left, duplicated and flipped on the right, and with the cup on the right added which is very clever. If I've got that completely wrong, you'll have to tell me afterwards. Looks inviting, and it does. We've got scones, strawberries, cream, jam, which I note is a very nice jam with added pims, not your average Tesco's cheap stuff, a pretty tea cozy, colorful crockery, and a beautiful red rose. The title sums it up. It's very inviting. We can imagine ourselves sitting here, enjoying the moment on a perfect summer afternoon. I notice that your camera angle is pointing downwards and I understand why you wanted to do that, because otherwise you wouldn't show all the things on the table to their fullest extent. But I wonder if you could have bent down just very slightly so that we had less of a feeling of height, but otherwise a lovely shot. I particularly like the framing of the wisteria on the left and the greenery on the right, possibly a rose. It's not tonally very different to the fence, but is nevertheless important in your composition. Memorabilia. What an interesting photo. I was tempted to think it was in France or Italy, but it's not because we have one and nine up on the wall and several pieces of English text, so it must be in the UK. Despite that, it still has a feel of a continental cafe. I like the fact that the man is alone. It's as if he's lost in his own thoughts 
whilst being among other people's memories. Mono is the right choice for this one. I can't imagine how busy and confusing it would be in colour, but in black and white we can focus in on the central character before we drift off and explore his surroundings. It's probably a little too grainy for my liking, but again, that's down to personal preference. What I love about this one is the emotion it evokes, because to me, that's what's most important in photography. Technical perfection is all well and good, but the images we remember are those that have some meaning for us. More than enough tea. Well, there would be more than enough with a teapot of this size. There's something of Alice in Wonderland about this one. Making the teapot super sized and the cups super small is extremely clever. The reflections are great too, especially around the base of the teapot. You've thought carefully about the composition and arranged the cups perfectly, keeping the teapot central, which is where it has to be, I think. I do wonder though why the position of the cup handles isn't consist consistent and matching on either side. Was that deliberate in order to in introduce a little tension into an otherwise very ordered shot? To nitpick, there are a couple of strong highlights near the base of the image that could have been got rid of, and the teapot lid is quite close, close to the top edge. I think a little more room to breathe could have been a good thing, but these are all minor points. A very creative image using everyday objects. Morning coffee, essential ingredients. And you've done almost all the puzzles, even the killer Sudoku. When I do Sudoku, there's lots of crosses out and eights made into threes, sixes made into fours, etc. But not a scribble on this. We've obviously got an accomplished puzzle solver here. There's a lovely softness to the image that I like a great deal. There are good details too. The newspaper has a little splodge of grease on it, which I like, and the cafetiere isn't full, suggesting that you've already had a cup or two. I also like the addition of the little cakes, which add interest but stay within the colour palette. The only thing I'm not sure of is the pen standing upright. I understand why you've put it there. Had it been lying flat, it would be difficult to photograph, but somehow it looks a little uncomfortable in that position. I don't know exactly why I'm afraid, but otherwise a lovely shot. Not in Colchester. Love the title. Well, we're not in Colchester, but we don't know where we are. Perhaps the south of France or somewhere in Spain maybe. It definitely looks like we're on holiday, not only because of the surroundings and the palm tree, but also the expressions on the faces of the man and we presume his son. Behind their shades, they look relaxed in the way that only holidays make us look relaxed. I don't mind at all that the man is looking at something out of shot. Had both characters been doing that, it wouldn't, in my opinion, have worked. But because the boy is making eye contact with the lens, it really does work. It's a super shot that's well exposed and captures the essence of a happy family moment. Oh yes, please. No calories, I'm sure. What a super pineapple upside down cake. Perhaps we ought to instigate baking competitions. Well exposed and lit, you've given us an almost straight down shot of the cake in all its glory. Food photography is surprisingly difficult. The glaze of sweet sticky syrup on the cake does cause some highlights, but they're not intrusive. I think the lower part of the image could have been darkened very slightly to give a more even tone, but otherwise a good shot of what must have been an absolutely delicious cake. Teacups. With the rose petals and the different colored cups, there's something almost oriental about this image. The neatness of the composition works well, as does the base you've chosen for your arrangement. When doing still life of this sort, there's always a choice to be made about where your point of focus will be, unless you're into focus stacking, which is something I've never tried, so I won't pretend to know anything about it. In the shot, it looks as if you've focused on the rim of the cups or possibly the tea in them. 
I don't know how your camera was set up, but I'd guess perhaps you were using an f-stop of around 6.3 or 7.1. And with that, you're going to get some drop off in focus on the rose petals. A higher f-stop right up around f18 or even f22 would have helped. But there are other factors such as how far away you were and what sort of lens you were using. So what I'm trying to say in a very roundabout way is that what looks like a simple shot is, in fact, quite complicated. You've made a great job of it, but it would have been even better if every, everything in the image had been pin sharp. T for one. It's that granddad mug again. It is T for one, but two biscuits I note, and why not? A very simple and effective image that fits the theme perfectly. You've thought about the composition and put one of the digestive biscuits chocolate side up and one chocolate side down and you've angled the camera so that we see the coffee inside the mug. Perhaps not as inventive or creative as some of our entries, but well exposed and photographed with no unwanted distractions. Tea in the shade. I love this shot. It's not the most technically accomplished, nor is it the most creative. In fact, you might say, that it's a little bit bright on the top right hand side, or it's a shame the legs of the chair weren't included, or that the table's a bit on the wonk, but I don't care about any of that. There's something about it that, for me, sums up a summer afternoon. Perhaps it's because I'm a mad keen gardener and therefore it makes me think about being where I love to be, in my garden. You've given us the essential tools of the gardener, the gloves, the secateurs, and of course the sun hat to keep the shade off the back of your neck when you're doing the weeding. I'm finding it hard to pinpoint exactly why, but it's an evocative image that really appeals to me. I think you've cropped it well, keeping in the essential elements, but not giving us any distractions that could cause our eyes to wander around. Well done. Texting tea break. In complete contrast to the previous image, this one isn't really about the tea, it's about the mobile phone, as is often the case in modern life. It's a picture of primary colours, isn't it? We've got red, blue and yellow. The little dog appears to be interested in something out of shot and the lady is absorbed in the essential message that just can't wait. And therefore I feel there's not much connection between the elements in the picture and the photographer. I'm not one for having people look into the lens all the time, but this feels just a little bit too remote for me. Watch the edges of your image. There's a little dot of green near the base towards the right and a piece of white on the right edge of the frame towards the top, the latter of which would have been difficult to remove because you would have cropped off the teacup handle, but perhaps it could have been cloned out. But well exposed in what must have been extremely bright sunshine and well seen. Un café s'il vous plaît. But it's not en France. It's clearly in the UK as all the coffee descriptions are in English. I know that's not necessarily a given as the French use so much English. I heard the words coffee to go said with a heavy French accent in the middle of a French transcript the other day, which made me laugh. But the vehicle is most definitely Francaise, from the town of Sour de Val, as it tells us. It has a blue light on the top, so maybe it had a previous incarnation as some sort of emergency vehicle. I can see it rush into the scene at a top speed of 25 miles per hour. But anyway, enough of that. Here we have a chap ordering his morning coffee or perhaps an afternoon iced latte on a lovely summer day with the perfect sky overhead. Well exposed, well caught and well seen. My only thought was that I'd have been inclined to do a very slight crop on the right hand side to get rid of the beige coloured vehicle in the background. Waiting for the barista. What I think makes this shot is the contrast between the shiny smooth chrome of the Gaggia machine and the rough stone and tile on the wall behind it. I suspect some of the wall texture has been introduced, but that doesn't matter at all. 
In fact, it's a real enhancement. Imagine the shot without it, and I think you'll agree that it wouldn't have anything like the same impact. The arrangement of mugs and jars, together with the blue jug, has been thought about very carefully. I wouldn't mind betting that you took several shots with different arrangements to see which worked best. I certainly would have done. The addition of the coffee beans is important, even though they are not an obvious part of the image. I might have cropped off the bottom so that we don't see the front edge of the worktop. I'm getting the feeling of a very, very slight tilt to the left, but I might be wrong about that. A super image, very accomplished technically and with lovely textures. So from our images, I have shortlisted four that particularly appealed to me. And those four are Coffee Time, which I thought was a very accomplished shot, technically almost perfect. Coffee Shop, Coffee Dream, again, another very, very good technical image. I love the composition, the softness, the high key, effect on this one. My third shortlist is Tea in the Shade because to me it's such an evocative image, sums up a spring or a summer afternoon in the garden just perfectly. And my final shortlist is Waiting for the Barista. Again another strong technical image with a lot of texture and colour in it um, and certainly one that is bang on in terms of fitting the theme. And my winner is Coffee Time. And Coffee Time is by Lorraine Green. So well done, Lorraine. Second time on our leaderboard. You've joined Andrew in winning twice. Well, there we are. Well done to Lorraine for winning this week. Our thanks to Ruth for judging this week and providing her own comments. Thank you, everyone. Not quite blooper free this week, so stay tuned. I couldn't do the intro again, could I? Aww. Yeah, but it's difficult to take an animal drinking a cup of coffee. Can I, could I do, is it a real pain to do the second one again? Because I think I fluffed that a bit. Okay, I'll just do that one again then. Au revoir, happy intro.